Let's so, just keep talking about it. We Hello everybody and welcome to the Filipino Free Thinkers podcast. That's also a video. That's also part of a webathon for the benefit of the Yolanda relief effort that's ongoing right now. I'm Red. I'm Frank. I'm Peter. I'm Georgie. And I'm Margie. And today we're going to talk about criticism in times of crisis. We have discussed some, a, a little bit about this, but it's still become, been very controversial lately on social media. And it's something that a lot of our people here, at least, feel that they need to talk about. So let's get started. Uh, the, the idea is, the basic idea, is that a lot of people on social media have been saying this message in more words or, or less. So it's, it goes like this, shut up, just help. Or there's this, there's this very famous graphic of a flag that says, shh, tumulong ka na lang. Okay, that's, that's how it goes. So uh, there are, of course, other versions of this. Some people... Ha, there was the tama na ngawa, ga, something about gawa and gawa. Like tama na ang gawa, simula na ang gawa, simula na ang gawa or something like that. Like that. It, of course, the basic message is that stop criticizing, stop blaming, stop being so noisy online. Just um, use all of that energy and effort to help out. So let's let's get started. Uh, Fran. Okay. Uh, um. I have a lot of complaints, and I'm a sort of person who's not gonna hold back from airing these complaints. And I'm 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 happy to say that my newsfeed is split, but more in favor of those people who are saying that if there is a time to complain, now is the time to complain. And there's few people who say rather loudly, um, "Don't don't complain, just just help," or like "Wag ka na magreklamo, tumulong ka na lang." Um, and these, these people, I'm sure they mean well, I'm sure they want to help a lot of people, but it's not an either or. It's not like you can, uh, you, you, if you're complaining, you're not helping. Because when, when people are doing real bad jobs at what, at what they're supposed to be good at, and, we're not com- uh, and, and we complain about that, we're actually helping by making sure that this stops being... Uh, they stop being wrong or stop doing wrong things, or in the future, if it happens again, they don't do that again. So, so this this wag ka na magreklamo, tumulong ka na lang mentality is actually destructive to efforts like this. So, or anything that's wrong. For example, you see an Apple politician and you complain, hey, why is he being Apple? You could just say say back, wag ka na magreklamo, tumulong ka na lang. Or someone is, or you see corruption and 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 mis- misappropriation of funds and you complain and someone tells you ka nang magreklamo, tumulong ka na lang. I mean, what kind of mentality is it that tells people to stop complaining about shit that's going down? I mean, that should not happen. And people who complain, I'm saying a lot of things, but people who complain about people who are complaining I mean, I'm gonna say to you, ka nang magreklamo, tumulong ka na lang. <laughs> <laughs> it's an endless regress. Yeah. I mean, stop complaining about our complaining, tumulong ka na lang. What the fuck? Stop complaining about our complaining about our complaining, tumulong ka na lang. But the, the, at the end of the day, it's always tumulong ka na lang. Isn't it yeah, good? That... Yeah, tumulong, I mean, it's not tumulong ka lang. I mean, tumulong ka, tumulong ka rin. I mean, tumutulong din kami. And we, we are helping while complaining. It's not like while I'm complaining, I can't. I can't Move. help. Like yeah. I, I can like let's let's donate right now while talking shit about the job. <laughs> or donate blood doing. while yeah. we're complaining I, it, and doing this podcast. Yeah, yes, donate blood and saying fuck this system. <laughs> so you should be <laughs> donating blood while you're walking around and complaining. Yeah. You should yeah. be donating blood like at your computer. There's the, the thing there. Yeah. Anyway, I'm like my my stand is complaining is helping when you're complaining about the right things. And there are no higher stakes right now in the Philippines than the relief efforts that are happening in the Visayas. So if there is something to complain about right now, it's what a shitty job is happening, if you think that's, that's the case. I mean, there are arguments, of course, that it's really not that shitty, and et cetera, et cetera. But if you think they're doing a wrong job, if, they think that you're, if you think they're doing badly, then now is the time to complain about it. Okay, so let's let's look at that. I wanna I wanna see what's the impact 
of complaining on the relief effort? Like, is there an actual detriment to the relief effort of people who are complaining online? Like, do the people who are on the ground there, like, are they somehow slower, knowing that on social media some people are complaining about them? Are they reading social media channels while they are the doing the relief thing. effort? Like, is somebody there telling them, hey, um, I heard that on social media people are criticizing you and they're doing the, they're distributing the goods. Oh, really? Huh, and then, and then, then, they're not then huh, I, 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 I won't distribute anymore because people are complaining about me on social media. Is it, no, what is the actual so. damage that complaining does to the, the, the actual relief effort? Because it's, it's one thing to, I, I don't even know if it even reaches the victims. Because they're not on social media. Like, they're not even on the radar, for, for all we know, in some areas. Well, from what I remember, there are people who were victims and evacuated to yeah. the city. To safer places where and they were, have internet yes, access. Yes, and internet access who are compelled to speak. Mm. And some of them have said that complaints now demoralizes them. Okay, co complaints them. demoralizes Demoralizes them. And okay. uh, the, the really workers who do receive news like this get demoralized that mm. their efforts are not, not appreciated. appreciated when they're really putting in so much time and effort to get the relief to so people the, who need them. The government, like DSWD, the, the public servants who are doing their best, um, go home, they're very tired, they have another early work day that they have to get into. Mm -hmm. and The burden of having to yeah, do and the then same they see, thankless effort can hit you. But then again, mm -hmm. there are also people who come back who say, there's really no help. Mm -hmm. And they're yeah. also the ones complaining. So they see Anderson Cooper, for example, saying that there's no government or there's not enough government presence or that the they it's not clear who is leading the relief efforts. They mm -hmm. see Anderson Cooper and somehow it demoralizes them, right? So I, I am sure that it, it's valid in some cases, and it's a matter of weighing the value of criticizing, as Frank said, as opposed to making sure that the people who are doing the relief efforts and who are on the ground aren't demoralized. But may I speak on a particular topic on this? Because I was born, a few years after I was born, martial law was declared. And that was the time that I really grew up in, a, in an environment that you really cannot speak against the government. You can't criticize. And the media then was, could be controlled by the government. So second, sometimes even when I go and uh, read my uh, news feed, it's really depressing the naman, all the complaints, some valid, some really silly, some talagang noise na lang. And it can really distract from efforts to help. Kaso nga lang, sometimes I ask myself, which would I prefer? You know, being able to see that people are really being, are able to complain and point out errors in how we have been doing things for, for the longest time or they shut up and help. And I say, like, I'd rather hear them complain. So it's a good thing that you raised that point about martial law because free speech is an ideal that is worth defending. And it's, but the question is, are there times when the exercise of free speech should be, you know, limited or tempered, especially when it could demoralize pe uh, people. I mean, a lot of people have been saying that this is a time when people need to be uplifted, they mm -hmm. need to be inspired. And maybe when you, when you show them something that they already know, people already know that the situation is bad. And maybe to talk about it in such a negative terms does have a, an impact on on the inspiration that they could be getting. Like, but do you exactly, think what that's what leaders are for. I think the inspiration and the, the, mo the motivation should come from, from the leaders themselves. And you, people have to consider what, in what position, in what capacity do they speak. If you have this capacity to influence a lot of people and distract from, from efforts, then please, you know, be more careful with what you say. But I think the ordinary man should be able to speak their minds because this for them is not only a matter of making noise it's it's also a process and for me as free thinkers i would really prefer that people are open with what on their minds but you know there's this sort of active the interaction with other people and from there you're able to polish your thoughts your data how you think how you form opinions how you start um collecting this data and coming up with a belief 
And yeah. to me, that's very important. The process itself of free speech in terms of refining our thoughts is important. I think it's also about checks and balances, yes. right? Somebody has to be there to be the critic, to be the the opposition. If it's all, you know, yellow. Yeah, if, yeah, if, if it's all cheerleading, you know. But And there can't be, like, it's not a situation where let's designate you people as the as the critics and you people as the cheerleaders uh, of course people will have their own motivations for saying whatever and that just um it's up to the 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 person to to figure out what valid opinion that they will listen to it's a free market of ideas exactly and no no idea is more valid than the other automatically like exactly. just because it's criticism it's automatically invalid because there is crisis yes, exactly. or in the same way just because it's inspirational, it doesn't mean that it's true mm. or that or it's helpful. even helpful. Exactly. Mm. Like, um, let's talk about some of the unhelpful, but maybe <coughs> inspirational messages that we've been seeing unhelpful? on social media. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, not not necessarily unhelpful, but just the let's let's take a survey of the inspirational messages that that we've been seeing. One of the the memes that went around was that even before the the Yolanda hit was that the Filipino spirit is waterproof. That I saw that everywhere. <sighs> mm -hmm. Well, that became, that, that I think, um, got some traction after the, the sequence of floods we've been having. Yeah. Mm. yeah and, and Which has become so normal. Yeah, already. actually, it's, it's, it's scary how normal it is. That, yeah. And how many people treat it as normal. And In you fact, know what's that really is sad? why it's not helpful at all. Yeah. To just keep on saying that the Filipino spirit is waterproof because it makes it normalizes this is this, this thing that should not be yes. seen as normal it's, the word it's, itself waterproof it just means that okay so okay, we can take yeah. all of this mm -hmm. this is this is the exact this is exactly the resilience that a lot of people are proud of in filipinos that that we can take these things on a normal basis like like they don't bother us anymore we're waterproof but they do they bother us a lot and not just bother i mean they kill a bunch of people every time they hit so when you say a Filipino spirit is waterproof, sure, um, uh, define there, waterproof. Is some, there is some spirit, then you define spirit and define waterproof, waterproof, but there are actual harms caused by these things. And to just normalize them by saying, by saying we are waterproof or we are mm. resilient, mm -hmm. that, that, that's a disservice to the people who are actually suffering because of these things. And yeah. who will suffer in the future if we don't change things? Because they might want to say that and claim that the Filipino spirit is waterproof, but Filipino bodies are not waterproof. Filipino people can be killed by floods, they can be killed by typhoons, and if we don't change the way we do things here in the Philippines, more people will be killed in the future. So this is really a serious harm that's being done by the so-called positive thinking so, that so many more, people are preaching. A more helpful message maybe could have been 10 meter high walls are waterproof. <laughs> You yes. know, exactly. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, Filipino spirit, it's actually kind of very fragile, mm. so we have to protect them by erecting um, 10 meter high uh, concrete walls or, you know, something that is actually waterproof. Proper infrastructure. And could is waterproof. withstand storm surges that reach up to 6 meters mm. Mm -hmm. because the Filipino spirit um, is very fragile. It People die, mm. people drown, and maybe um, people would. Uh, could become hopeful in, in times of crisis, but what other choice do they have? Of course, they have to pick themselves up because life just goes on and people try to be resilient. And uh, I, yeah, I would ahead. add that a lot of this positivity, um, while um, well intentioned, is based on a, a position of privilege that you are privileged mm. enough to say that, uh, and then you generalize that the Filipino people, we, all of us, are resilient. And you're, you're forgetting the fact that you're in this position of privilege. You're not among those who have lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. or, or you're not among those who are suffering right now. So when you say the Filipino spirit is waterproof, consider that one of those people you're talking about and talking to are people who are still suffering. So you can't be on your, your um, higher ground saying we're waterproof, we're, we, we, we can do this. We are privileged to have received this storm instead of other places. I mean, tell that to the people who have mm -hmm. lost entire families. I mean, what, you, yeah, yeah you, have, you really have no right. Now, what bothers me about this thing is that it's not solu solution-oriented. We always seem yeah. to avoid the fact that, you know, when we encounter disasters, when we are encountering problems, 
the first thing we need to do is not to feel good about the thing and then let that fe- the good feeling drag on. The whole point is something happened that's bad. You have to come up with a solution so it does not happen again. Hmm. I'd Marty, like to talk yes. about okay. the million pion march. <laughs> <laughs> You've been holding that back. Yeah. Like, I've been seething in my seat for like for like 10 minutes now. Um, speaking of um, over overly being being overly positive um there's this event called the million payong march um it's a play on the million man march which didn't actually happen because there were only a few hundred thousand and then the million mass march where 80 people only came um yun. um the million payong march basically says that um their goal is to create an impact nationwide sending a message of hope to the yolanda victims while donations and volunteering is a good thing there's a power statement in united people group or a large crowd it's a statement of unity and teamwork. It's time to deliver that message to our people in Visayas. Let's bring an umbrella, which is a symbol of defense against rain or storms. And then they're going to go to Luneta, and they're going to open their umbrellas, and they're going to be messages of like hope or whatever the fuck. Um, and they're, they're going to take pictures of it um, from an aerial view. Um, and they say that this is important because the people there in, uh, in Eastern Visayas um, what they really need right now, um, there are too many volunteers now. Like all the cent- all the relief centers are flooded with people. What? But we don't need too many people. What we need is like people standing around in in um, Doneta, just doing nothing but showing hope. That is the most futile thing I've ever heard in my entire life, and it disgusts me. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I said, I'm so mad at this idea <laughs> that. You're speaking from a from a point of privilege that you have the ability to take a cart to to Luneta and just stand there and buy an umbrella and and alam mo yon, parang there are so many other better things you can do to help. that are that's concrete in order to help. I don't want to waste an afternoon just smiling. I actually want to use do like use my body to do something that will actually provide relief to these people. Okay, the the opinions of Margie are of course hers and mine and and Frank's <laughs> and do not necessarily reflect the the organizational position of the Filipino free thinkers. I for my part am also critical of maybe the effectiveness of something like this, but I in general do not want to criticize how someone wants to cope with a tragedy such as this. Um, maybe it's kind of like prayer, that, uh, that million payong march, where it's not so much for the benefit of the victims or of the, those people who were affected yeah. by the Yolanda. It was, it's also for them. They want to, to feel better. better. They want to feel hopeful. Yes. And they want to inspire Others, themselves. Yeah. Of course, um, there's still so much that can be said about this issue of how to help or how to criticize or when the, the two might not be... Uh, so compatible mm-hmm. um, but for now we will end this podcast and the web, the web and we will continue the the, the discussion after but this is just a, po- a limited podcast mm-hmm. so thank you for watching this and donate to the Red Cross uh, see you next time